It's the wedding season special here on DXB today. And as we mentioned a little bit earlier on, something of a trend in the wedding industry at the moment is, of course, sustainable weddings. We have sustainable fashion advocate uh, joining us now. Also board member uh, at ASRAC, Amanda, thanks so much indeed for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. So again, I mean, we've been having this discussion on the yes. sofa this evening. You've been listening on intently from afar as well. I mean, we're, descri we're des describing it as a trend, the, the, but it's not a word I like to use that often. I mean, should all weddings and all wedding planning be looking at sustainability at the moment? I think if there's a wedding planner that's worth her salt, she'll factor it in to weddings moving forward because, as you say, it isn't a trend. And the UAE is very clear on sustainability being more than just a trend moving forward. So weddings shouldn't be separate to that. They're big occasions. They often call for opulence and luxury and that doesn't mean that it can't be done mindfully with consciousness and not just in the planning but as you touched on before you know what happens to the items afterwards are you buying things for your wedding that you can repurpose are you using them on a, on a one-off moment and I guess we all hope it's our only wedding so we assume that you know the dresses and everything from you know the tableware, the settings, and even the invites—they're all only going to be used once, which is the most unsustainable form of consumerism out there. So, I guess as a bride who got married earlier this month, I congratulations! congratulations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it was a long time coming. Uh, COVID unfortunately delayed it by three years, so I had my wedding dress sitting looking pretty, doing nothing for a long time and was lucky enough to really um, have that moment because I think, you know, everyone deserves that moment of having a wedding. Well, I did want to ask wedding. about the wedding dress, especially because we're talking about sustainability and stuff. And I know a lot of brides are going to be very shocked. <laughs> Wouldn't it be more sustainable to rent the dress yes. rather than buy it? So renting a wedding dress is very important if you have the ability to find one that makes you feel the way that, you know, Jenny was explaining earlier, it makes you feel like it's Special. the right one for you. Yes, it's your one day and we hope we don't have another one of them. So <laughs> um, I didn't find that, unfortunately, and during lockdown, I didn't have the opportunity to go and try them on. Thinking lockdown wouldn't last as long as it did, uh, I went ahead and, and purchased one online. But what I'm doing with my dress and what I think is really important is to keep it within a circular economy. So in fact, I had a lady come and try on the dress today who's looking at purchasing it off me wow. for her wedding next year. And it is such a beautiful dress. I'm very biased, obviously, <laughs> but it is such a beautiful dress. So to see it on someone else and to see it have its light in, in day again would be wonderful, not just about you know keeping it in a sustainable circle. Mm -hmm. Amanda, we're seeing footage of your wedding and it is a gorgeous dress indeed. <laughs> and you've made it sustainable, a sustainable wedding. Can you tell us a little bit about how you did that? So from a mindset, obviously it's, it's at everything I do, whether it's um, day to day lifestyle or obviously a big event like a wedding. But um, there were things that I took into consideration from the very beginning and was the one implementing them with my wedding planner. So um, paperless invites, and they don't have to be, you know, boring emails that go out. It's not like an e-card. Um, Oscar de la Renta designed the one that I used. You can get some really nice collaborations online on paperless uh, post. Um, so that helped reduce, obviously, the invitations and, you know, needing to send them, which is carbon footprint. Um, from a wedding perspective in itself, we had Everybody in one location, um, which really helps. So staying there over the night as well. Mm. Um, we also looked at reducing the flowers. Sorry, no flowers. <laughs> Don't apologize no, to no me, fresh I'm not flowers. the wedding planner. Um, not none, because I did have a bouquet and mm. he had a boutonniere and there were some small areas of baby breath that can be dried afterwards. Mm -hmm, yeah. So we were thinking ahead on that one. And something wasn't uh, a very popular decision by the local teams, but we actually reduced the courses to two. Oh, so uh, food wastage was yeah, yeah. obviously something I wanted to take into consideration. And other than sort of making sure that we were sourcing only local artists and musicians and videographers and photographers, uh, also having only local caterers and, and things, are, they go with the territory of, of having a, 
international wedding. But I didn't get married here. Oh. So... Um, How did you offset the carbon footprint? Uh, well, it's still doing that. Uh, Holding you to account there. Picking up all the, all the, all the beach But where were most of your guests? Were they here? We had a 50-50 split, okay. which is why it was such a difficult decision. Mm, but tough, we knew that in terms of cost as well, mm. offsetting more sustainable options meant that mm. we could reduce the cost elsewhere. Mm. And, and that really helped our international wedding be a little bit more. But uh, Rihanna, it yeah. proves that it can be done. Friendly. It can, there's so many things that you can do, you know, it, it, what's the quote, I mean, one small step, you know, small steps uh, make big moves, big waves, um, but what I was going to ask is, as someone that's very vocal about environmental issues across the board, not just, you know, when it comes to mm. weddings, um, how can we start changing people's mindsets? Mm. Because I went to an event recently, it was a B2B event, and I actually brought this question up mm -hmm. amongst many global, very big wedding planners. And the answer I got kind of broke my heart from one of them, um, who kind of really dismissed my question was, what do you do with these huge sets that you build afterwards? And these are for the massive weddings. Mm -hmm. And my question was completely dismissed. So. How do we start changing the mindset? Uh, what advice can you give? I would say it's not about being perfect. Mm -hmm. And if everybody does one small sustainable change within their habits, be it day to day, every day, or their business and um, perhaps even local environment, making the small changes ultimately all Leads makes a big change. Yeah. And you know, there's a lot of pressure, I think, on people to do more. Mm. But if they haven't started somewhere, then they're never going to reach yeah. their, their goals. Uh, the first thing I would say to people is actually look at what's around you. Look at what you can reuse, look at what you don't need to buy more of. Um, and shop secondhand. Shopping secondhand wedding dresses is yeah. hugely popular now, which is great to see. Uh, we're losing that taboo of secondhand shopping and thrifting. There are platforms um, that exist now actually dedicated to second-hand second yes, gowns. Yes, it's fantastic. And you're not going to lose that uh, moment of being in a dress when you know that at the end of the day, somebody else has, has put had that and worn it and loved it. And you know, you're well, going to have that the too. thing, because I have one quick question, one mm -hmm. a quick answer. Uh, you obviously made some sacrifices when it came to your wedding. Mm -hmm. Do you regret anything? Nothing. If anything, we could have cut down more. And I think if you speak to most brides or grooms after a wedding, there's lots of things that end up actually being superfluous. When, you know, at the big at the time they were important details that people were, you know, almost Obsessive. designed to have yeah. because that's what we do at yeah. weddings. But that doesn't that's mean it's necessary and it doesn't mean it's gonna be missed if it's not there either. So, you know, put your purse first and put the environment uh, and there as well, and, and it shouldn't just be a trend. Mm. Sustainability Absolutely. needs to be a, a, you know, yeah. a, a movement. Yeah. yeah, it is a movement. And Amanda, firstly, wanted to congratulate you again on your Thanks. wedding just a couple of weeks ago. Yes. And secondly, wanted to thank you for the being a sustainable, conscious bride that you have been. I think the region can learn so much about you. I think my culture specifically <laughs> <laughs> are culprits, but the UAE is such a wonderful place in kind of encouraging sustainability and you're an amazing example of that. So thank, thank you, you very much for joining us in the studio thank today. Thank you very much. And I believe, Faris, it's time for DXB in 60. That's right, it's time to put Rhiannon in the hot seat. I don't know if you've been warned about this. <laughs> no. But you're going to have oh to 60 seconds on the clock to answer as many questions Could've about yourself <laughs> oh, as possible. Oh, okay. So okay. the more questions you answer, the better we get to know you, I think. Okay, yalla. Right. We're going to start the clock in three, two, one. If you weren't the founder of Bride Club ME, which industry do you think you'd be working in? Well, I'm a multifaceted entrepreneur That's and I'm true. already doing it. I'm in musical theatre as well, so I'll All right, stick to that. What would you do that you're not already doing? Save the world. <laughs> <laughs> One thing you cannot live without. My son. Oh. Uh, what's your motto in life and in work? Be a good person. If you could hang out with someone for 24 hours, who would it be? Oh my your goodness. Your son again. Oh, that's a difficult question. Mm, I, you can say past but if you want. But most of them are passed away. Oh, yeah, well. Prince. All the better. Prince. Uh, the most interesting person you've met in the city? Oh, uh, Sheikh Abdul Ali Aziz of Ashman. That's pretty oh, good. Oh, sorry, not you mean in Dubai? In it, whatever. Yeah, in the, yeah, yeah, the in Green Dubai. Sheikh. The Green Sheikh. The Green Sheikh. Yeah. Uh, top series you've watched this summer? 
Um, I don't really have time. <laughs> Fair enough. Top podcast recommendation? I do like Steve, Stephen Bartlett's uh, podcast. Okay, Diary very good. CEO. Well, we're out of time. But before we, we, we say goodbye to you, I want to know why Dubai? Why of Dubai? Of all places to do your business. Uh, because people here are so uh, willing to network, help, collaborate. It's and an listen. innovative city. And this is where you should be, if anywhere in the world. Rihanna, thank you so much indeed uh, for your time. Thanks for guest co-hosting for you. us today. And thanks for uh, all your expertise. Right, it's the iFitness Challenge. Uh, and therefore, we are dedicating part of the show to all things fitness in all its different guises. Stay with us. Coming up next, things is going to get punchy. <laughs>